The following episode of Dad vs. Daughter was made possible by a contribution from Asthma Day. Hello and welcome to another episode of Dad vs. Daughter. I'm Tim the Dad. I'm Meg the Daughter. Megan, what are we playing today? We are playing the 20th anniversary edition of Carcassonne. This is from Z-Man Games and Asthma Day. Yeah, this one actually has three expansions included. It's got the River, uh, the Abbot, and one for the 20th anniversary edition. Yep. Plus, this looks really cool. It does. So let's just open it up and get to playing it. All right. playing with all three of the expansions. So the first expansion we want to talk about is the brand new river. Now you can see we have a new starting tile that actually has the river going in a couple of different places and you'll notice it also has prominently the 20th on there. So that's going to start off in the middle and then we have a total basically of 17 river tiles that uh, we are going to start with. So there is that stack. And then we also have uh, the Abbott expansion. So each one of us has a little Abbott guy. So I'll show you my guy here. Uh, whoops, that's his backside. Yes, because these stickers have a front and back. Uh, actually, no, that is his front side. Wow. <laughs> He's so ugly, his front side looks like his backside. That's so, sad. The, so there's his front side I and have, there's like, his backside. A little old lady. That's mine. You do. Um, because the stickers came with this ex this uh, 20th anniversary thing yes. and Megan got to pick out which stickers went yes. on which colored meeples. Because it was not assigned and there was still some stickers left over too so I guess if you ever lose some you need some replacements or you can pick and choose like all of my blue ones um, have all the yeah. redhead characters yeah. which is nice. <laughs> and uh, so you can um, like I said you can choose which ones uh, you want to put those stickers on? You don't even have to use them if you don't want to. It's just kind of fun, like, addition I mean, for this. you know, it, it jazzes the game up. And why wouldn't you want to do that? Because you don't like stickers. That's why I assembled. Well, you did it. I, so, I did all yeah. of them, yeah. So I was good with that. <laughs> so with the Abbott expansion, you'll notice some of these tiles have this garden on there. Now, the Abbott is going to work kind of like a normal meeple whenever you claim... Uh, an abbey or a cloister or whatever they like to be called. It seems like they change the names of those. Uh, but what you can do is you can place your abbot on that uh, garden. And he is the only character that you can put on there. You can't put a normal meeple on a garden. Uh, but what you can do is if you don't place a meeple on your turn, you can actually take your abbot back off of whatever uh, uh, monastery or garden he's on. And you immediately score the points for the completed sections of that. So if uh, he was, you know, surrounded by, uh, you know, seven tiles, then you would score that even though it's not complete. The final expansion that we're going to be using is the brand new 20th anniversary expansion. Now that is going to come with three different symbols. There's 15 new tiles in all, and there's five of each of the symbols. So we're going to talk about what each one of these does. So you can see this one has a double meeple. When this uh, special ability resolves, you are going to be able to place one of your meeples that you have in your supply uh, on a structure or, or basically an, an area that you already have a meeple on. So it's going to be able to get you, um, you know, help you out with your majority. This symbol is going to allow you to take one of the meeples from your supply and put it anywhere on the landscape that is not completed. So let's say that there's a, uh, a city out there that nobody has claimed. You could place one of your meeples on that, or you could place it on a farm or on a road, as long as it's not already claimed or occupied. Yeah. And then this one here has like a double uh, tile looking thing. And what you can do with that is as soon as that one resolves, you're going to be able to take an additional turn. Now, the thing with that is you only get to do that once per turn. So it's not like you can keep chaining those and having a bunch of multiple turns. Now, if these are ever facing uh, something that is uh, basically empty space, they do not resolve. 
and if someone else would would come along and place a tile that would butt up against where that arrow is pointing, they would actually fire off and resolve that uh, event. Uh, however, if you do go ahead and let's just say that uh, I had this tile down, I could place that tile like that and you can see both of those would fire off because they are pointing to uh, a tile that already exists there. So that's just a, a neat kind of way that you can get a little bit more out of your turns. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these 15 new tiles and we're going to shuffle and shuffle those into our stacks and those are going to be pulled just like we would pull any of the other normal ones. But I think that's pretty much it. So let's get ready to play. So before we get started, uh, kind of like all of our other Carcassonne uh, videos, we keep the uh, score uh, board off of camera. So it kind of generates some suspense. You don't know who is winning unless you're, you're like, you know, remember everything and you're just keeping track. It's but, mainly because of table spacing, but we can keep you in suspense that way too. <laughs> yes. Um, and like I said, we are going to be drawing those river tiles until mm -hmm. we get to the end. Now, there are two uh, tiles that actually end the river. Those are shuffled and both of those are placed as the bottom two tiles. Uh, so that way you always end with that. Um, the rules always say the youngest player gets That's to go me. first. So Megan gets to go. And the river cannot loop back upon itself either when assembling it. Correct. Now, whenever you do place a river tile out, you can, in this case, she could claim a field if she wanted to. Or she doesn't have to. Yeah. Let's draw from the right stack here. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to place this one here. Ooh. And I will go ahead and I'm going to claim that city. I'm going to do the same. Place that there, but I am not going to claim that river. Go here. I am going to claim that Abbey. Cloister, monastery. Like I said, I think they always change the names. You were even explaining it. You gave it like three different names. I know. So cause, I mean, it's like every one they always call something yeah, different. Yeah, something like, different. Uh, I'm going to place this one here. And that one has a garden on it, so yeah. I'm going to place. I think, you know, the Abbots like to garden. I, yes. I suppose it's their one hobby. I don't know. Um, I'll take the road. The road. The road. Less travel. Uh, let's go here. And mm. I'm gonna go ahead and claim that city. Oops. Go there. Uh, I'll claim the city. The nice thing about the river is it gives you a starting group of tiles. Um, that you're going to basically kind of define what yeah. your, your layout's going to be like. It's and it's of, usually never the same. Yeah, it's an interesting like template. Kind of go off of them when you're building. And I think I mentioned that normal meeples cannot be placed on gardens. Only abbots can. Yes. city down there so I'll go ahead and claim, claim that. that city. Nice. Now we're going to be starting to take from our normal stack. All right since that is arrow is facing an occupied or not occupied a completed yep. area let's take another tile in. Um, I'll just I thought I had cleaned the road, but I guess I passed on um, it. Um, yeah, you have never So let's just go here. And, uh, you know what? I'm not going to clean that road. Okay. Go there. I will clean that road. I'm going to place here. And I will close that city and I will claim it. Nice. And that will be four points. And I get my meeple back. Mm -hmm. 
And I realize I'm, I haven't really explained the normal rules of Carcassonne. Um, kind of going on uh, on faith that most people know how to play Carcassonne. You don't Carcassonne. know how to play this, yeah. And if not, I mean, watching us play it might be just the best way. It is pretty self-explanatory once you get the gist. Yeah. Puzzle building. That one there. Puzzle world building. And we'll kind of reiterate when we score mm -hmm. things. Fields are the only things that don't score during the game. They yes. score at the end of the game. Um, well, we're going to do this. We're going to... Um, that's going to close that city, but I'm going to also claim this one. So that gives me mm -hmm. four points. Nice. And then I'm placing that there, and I am going to score that, but I am going to have a farmer go there. And you gave me my four points? You did, yeah. Okay. This one nice. there, and I'll claim that. All right, I will place that there, and I'm going to claim that road, and that's going to be two points for me. Let's go ahead and close that down there for okay. four points. Get my meeple back. Uh, you know, let's just do this. Let's close that city, claim that for four. Nope. You've not scored any. No, I haven't. <laughs> oh. Nope. I kind of dropped all my meeples off really early, and now I kind of host myself. I think. Uh, you know what? Let's just do this. Limit on that? I'm gonna, uh, yeah, let me get down on that too. Okay, I'm gonna pop this one off. This is a little heart. Ah, there you go. So, so when a complete, the city is completed, you're gonna score two points per uh, section. Eight. So, two, There's four, six, no eight. Shields on there or anything? Yeah, shields would give you an additional two points. Now, that's different um, if that was an uncompleted city at the mm -hmm. end. Pop that guy there, and I'm going to claim that ROAD. It's going to be three points. And we say ROAD in uh, honor of our buddy Hefe, mm -hmm. who we've mentioned many a time. Yep. Just kind of stuck. Well, let's just go ahead and get that one joined up. Building that to go take my city there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close this off. No. And no, uh, this is uh, what I mean. Resolve. So I'm going to get, I can put a meeple where I already have a meeple if I want. I was say, so keep um, there. Which I am not going to do, but I yeah. will take another turn. Oh, yeah. So you're doing both of those. Nice. Um, that does not help me there. But I will go here. Close that end section off. Okay. And because I've already done yep. that, um, well, I guess I could, but I'm not going to. Okay. But I, All right. Two, four, six, eight. Oh my 
I'm going to place this, and that will complete my abbey there. Your field, or your, yeah, garden. Um, oh, my garden, yes. Garden, so yeah. I will score nine points, and I will get him back. Okay. So that's going to put me to there. I could have claimed that road if I wanted, but I, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Back to this road. Can I tighten it up a little bit? And come over to here and there. And I'm going to claim that road. Okay. I'll place this here and I'll put my abbot on that garden. Would you like to place your abbot over there? No. I'm not going to have him garden? I don't think he's going to get built around. Well, much. you can always get some points out of it, though. No, I can't shop if you don't, into it. If you don't uh, yeah. place a meeple. Very true. Place that one all the way down there. That one like that. Yeah, so you can place another meeple somewhere. Uh, I am not going to do that. Okay. Um, that does not compute there. Place that one way down over there. Now I'm encroaching into your space. Yeah, a little bit. I will place this here and I will claim that. Now for another four points. That. that completes this road. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All the way down here. I think here. it's new lights or social distance. I'm no, encroaching on your I'm area of the table there. Oh, nice. Yep. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve points. Ooh. That was pretty good. Uh -huh. Um. I'll just go here and jump in on that city for the moment. Get in on this road. I'm going to close this city. Nice. And it's going to be two, four, six points. I can get close to claiming that. Ooh. That is messy right there. I need the right combination. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should have done that earlier. Darn it. Oh, well. Mistakes were made. Let's just put it that way.
You always make a move and yeah. then you, you see another move that you didn't see before. Mm -hmm. um, so I can put a meeple somewhere else. That's on the uncompleted yeah, I know. section. Any good roads or? Uh... Well, the roads are already completed. That's what I was trying to see. Um. I, I mean, go. I guess you could get in on this city and I try could, to. Could, but ugh. because there's only one other. Yeah, I guess I we'll try. Why I help you? I don't know. Yeah, you know why not? Um, replace that yonder. Hey, I think I can complete this. Oh, nice. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. All right. 2, two 4, four six, 6, 8, 10, 10 12, 12, 14, 14 16, 16, 18. 18. Yep. Nice, nice. Uh, it's going to go there. I'm going to do this. I'm going to give you four points for your little Thank city you very there. Much. Appreciate you. But I'm going to take a bunch of points here. I'm going to take two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four points. Ew. Uh, get some of you there. Yeah. Right, I'm completing this row ad. Wow. That's a big row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Over here, too. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Place this one here. Nice. And I'll claim that. Oh, you forgot to take him off. Oh, okay. You put it back down to that road all the way down there. Along with this? Yeah. Just like that? Yep. Okay. Would you like to claim the no, city? I no, you do not. It's yucky. It's yucky. All right, I'm going to put this <laughs> here. No bueno. I'm going to claim this city, but uh, I'm going to be firing this one off to take another turn. And I think I will just use that to complete that city that I just claimed. So another four points for me. It's, I hate these big cities. They're not good. In like any which way, trying to complete them, it's a mess. Any which way, blues. It's, I'm not a fan of them. So I think I'm just going to place this one here. I'm not going to do the, uh, ability. the the ability there, but I think I will go ahead and jump in on the city. Okay. Can you put that in that little hole right there? Just like that? Yeah, then yeah. I'll get in on that. Yeah, that's not bad. And it helps my little garden. Helps your garden grow? It does. And I thought I had a really good thing for this. But as it turns out, I was mistaken. I'm just going to place this here and continue my row ad. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what? Because I did not place a meeple, I'm going to go ahead and pull my abbot back. And that's going to score me seven points. Yep. You continue on to my city down there. Like that? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. This is what I like about this. What I like no. about you. I'm going to place oh, this yeah. there. I'm just making I'm my Place my difficult. abbot there. And that scores that one for another nine points. <laughs> Do 
see, now I need a road piece. That's difficult. You mean one like this? Yeah. That would be yeah. awesome. You know what? That would help you out. Give you nine more points. Or I could just not no, play something see, and get I eight think, points. I think that would be very beneficial because you need that one more point. I need that one more you point. You need it. I need it. Um, it would help you very much. I'm actually gonna, I don't think it works over there. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to claim that... Uh, do I want to claim the city? Yeah, because it doesn't do anything good to farm there. But that completes this road. For eight. So one, you two, could give three, yourself four, one more five, point. six, seven, eight. All right. You eight. could have gotten one more point. Right there. Oh, I'll finish off that little mess there. Oh, two, four, six, eight, ten. Whoops, hang on, hang on. And, you know, I'm going to pull this guy back and score eight points. And I'm going to close this city off here and get another four points. We're getting down to the nitty gritty. We are, yeah. Um, three points. And take the road less traveled. There's a lot of roads. A lot of them are completed though. Is there that? Yeah, let's click that road. Because we're getting down to the end here. Mm -hmm. Place this oh, here, that's and nice. that's why I have my Abbott handy. Hey, I bet. You would have made a better suggestion, but what? you already placed it. Yeah. You only got you. Yeah, points. I keep forgetting about that one there. Yeah. Place this here. Guess what, though? I got the and perfect one. Perfect piece. Bam. Oh. It helps you, though, but it also helps me. So... You are going to score actually 18 points. Yes. So let's just go ahead and give you your 18 points. Um, let's see. And I get nine. nine. That was a good piece. A good piece. Um, I got dudes left. There's no open cities other than the ones you already have, right? Yeah. So. Well, you've got that one still open. Actually, this is this is not connected to anything, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna place my meeple there, and I could fire that off and put a meeple on an uncompleted section, which I do have. Um, and why wouldn't I? So let's, this is an uncompleted section here. Uh, I guess that's going to be the best. Or I could put it on a farm. Ooh, I could farm. That would actually give me more points. I think about either way, I'm going to score about the mm -hmm. same. I think three is about the magic number. Yeah. Looks like it's about three. Um, yeah. So let's just go ahead and put him, put him here. Because that's going to score those three. Mm-hmm. And I'm done. Okay. You got one tile left? Yep, and you got the big one there? Yep. That'd be it. All right. So we're going to go ahead and walk through 
scoring here mm -hmm. uh, with the incomplete. So we're going to just we're going to start with you okay. since you're further behind on the uh, score map there. Yeah. Uh, this garden is mm -hmm. going to score you seven points. Yeah. So I'll put you there, mm -hmm. and then you get him back. This one is going to score you four points, points. and you get him back. Um, That's my grandma piece. That your grandma That's my piece? grandma with some sheep. Uh, you want to go ahead and count your cities down yeah, there, one, and you two, so you're going to get one point for uncompleted cities plus one point mm -hmm. per shield. So six here, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten there. And that would be me. All right, so we'll go ahead and start with me here. I'm gonna get one, two, three, four for him, and two for him. He's gonna get uh, eight, or excuse seven. me, seven, I can't count. Yep. And three. Um, three for the farm. One, two, there's two cities. Three. Okay. Uh, three, so that's gonna be nine points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This guy gets three. One, yeah, two, he's three. Get three. Yeah, he's going to get, well, nine points. Yeah, three so cities. So that puts me there. This guy is going to get me eight. eight. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two for your row ad. And two for that row. And, and one, two, three for that one. One, two, three. Dad. All right, so I actually lapped did. Megan. I did not do good this game. Uh, and I'll come back and we'll tell you what the score is. So I get the uh, I get the twentieth anniversary trophy. So Megan, you finished with. 120 and I finished with 179 which is really good you got off to a real slow start I did I think I screwed myself over by dropping all those meeples and I'm being like wait but I, then I just need to complete things in order to get points so. yeah well that's yeah. and that's where you know these special uh special tiles that have yeah. those you know abilities kind of really helps out because then you can get multiple turns um you know and that could be huge, especially when placing other meeples or trying mm -hmm. to get in on stuff. Yeah. All right. So now let's get to what we think. Okay. So this is Carcassonne. Um, so normal Carcassonne, we like. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've played almost every version out, I think. Um, with the exception of the expansions for the base, but we've played like all the a lot of the different ones. Actually, we own I think two others that we have not even played yet. Yeah. Uh, but we've played a lot, and we've featured a lot on the channel. Uh, so let's talk about the expansion. So the first expansion, the river. Uh, this is a little different, and I've played Carcassonne a lot on the um, iPad app, and I really like the river. Um, the new river having this double thing, I think is, is kind of nice, but I always like it as a starting thing. This was really your first exposure to the river. What did you think of it? I liked it, yeah. Um, I like how it kind of shapes how you start your game other than, you know, just drawing one and kind of going off that first starting one. It's really interesting. It gives you some different opportunities from the get go to drop some meeples down and claim some things. And that can be a good thing and a bad thing, just depending on how you draw things and how the river actually is formed, because the river is never going to be the same every time you put it down. Because <laughs> you can never step in the same river twice. Yeah, I was thinking that, yeah. <laughs> okay, Pocahontas. Yep. Um, no, and you're right, because you, I mean, I've always found that when you play with the river, you're dropping a lot of meeples down, and you don't know how that's going to react um, later in the game. One of the things in the original river you've kind of got a, a two-part city, and that can be a little tricky um, trying to get that one claimed up because you, you know, you've got a lot of roads that will kind of mess with that. But I really like the river, and I really like um, how this new river works. Okay, second expansion, the Abbot. Now, this was the first time that I've really played with the Abbot since we started playing with this 20th uh, anniversary edition. Um, the Abbot is... I, I think I've appreciated it more the more we've played it. Being able to take that Abbott back 
and score, uh, kind of get you out of a tricky situation. Or, you know, you, you basically get him back if you draw another uh, abbey or monastery, uh, or in this case, a garden where you can place him. So I really like that. What do you think of it? I don't think I utilize it very much. Um, maybe it's just because I'm not used to playing it in the other park zones. Um, so I didn't really give it too much thought or strategy. It might have probably been a little bit more useful in some cases, but I don't really utilize that one as much. And if I do, I kind of put it down and then I don't really think about it, mainly because it's a meeple that I can't use, um, you know, dropping on claiming other cities and things like that. Right. So I don't particularly care for it or like, you know, like or dislike it. I'm kind of indifferent on it. Yeah, it's, I, I, I know when we first started playing with it, I wasn't wowed by it. Uh, but like I said, the, the more I've played it, the more I think I've, I've learned how yeah. to play it. I mean, I think for us, if we play this version of Cardstone, it's going to be in because we're just going to play with all the expansions. So it's something to consider, but it's not something I think that make or breaks the game. Like where you, like a situation like where you really need to play this one or, you know, adding it in really doesn't change a lot. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah. All right. So then the final is the 20th anniversary one, which... Um, I like, um, and it's one that you kind of have to think about when you're placing those tiles. Uh, are you going to place it where you're going to benefit, or is somebody else going to on a future turn? Mm -hmm. um, and you want to try to, I think, get it so you're going to be the one getting the benefits. Uh, the one I like the most out of the three, I think, is the extra turn. Um, I don't seem to use the other ones as much. I kind of pass on those. Th there's sometimes, like at the end of that game, you know, I used the one where I could place on an unfinished area and mm -hmm. I, I scored, you know, nine more points, you know, by having a field yeah. there. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Um, I think it definitely depends on like what tile it is on when you draw it, um, especially for that one where you can draw two tiles because like you can definitely use it for different things. I mean, you have to look at it if do you want that ability or do you want to do it, you know? to more complete your little city do you want it for the road like what other features of it do you want to utilize yeah that's a good point it's it really comes down to how do you best strategize mm -hmm. using that um and remembering where they're at yeah. so you know on a future turn if you've kind of got like a throwaway um you might want to activate one of those abilities oh, sure. um i like it i i think it adds quite a bit to the game um, it adds at least more tiles if nothing else you it does 15 bonus tiles then yeah um and you know like i said the river is adding 17 so mm -hmm. and you can see that that's not a lot more um and no. it doesn't take it doesn't add a lot of uh, time to the game mm -hmm. but uh no i i've really enjoyed playing with that all right so that's kind of the gameplay and the expansions what do you think about the art I like it. I think it's really cool. Um, I liked looking at all of the different, you know, kind of like Easter eggs, I guess, that you want to call them, you know, when I'm waiting on you to make your turn, you know, there's different things from different expansions in here. You know, you have the elephants and the lions um, and the mammoths and there's a baobab tree somewhere in here, um, you know, from the like the Africa pack, which kind of stood out to me. Um, just kind of looking at some of the, like, the flavor art, because it's not really flavor text. Safari, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there was, like, one of them, where there was two guys drinking beer under a tree. Oh, yeah, they're over here. So, like, I think that's on a couple of them. There's, like, a campfire somewhere else, you know. Okay. There's banquets going on in these villages, you know. You can kind of see the lights and all those. And they have that little glossy finish on them. I know we showed that off in our unboxing. Um, the little guys with the banners, they all have 20s on them. So it's kind of cool. It kind of makes it, you know, stand out a little bit more. The banners on, you know, your yeah, cities like are a little shiny. Here's one here. Um, but you can see, yeah, that banner says mm -hmm. it says 20. And if you look at it, you can see that it's shiny. And even, you know, a little bit of definition around there. Yeah. Uh, really helps, I think, the uh, the art mm -hmm. really pop. And, it does. And yeah. I've really enjoyed having that on. Especially, like, this one here. Um, with the end of the water, you can see the whole water mm -hmm. is is glossy. It's really yeah. showing up real well on the, uh, there we go. Um, but I think that looks really neat. Yeah. Um, also on these 20th expansion, um, you know, for that variation, it has a little 20 kind of etched in there. 
Right. Um, not It's kind of subtle, but it's easy to see. So if you want to take those out, obviously you can look for the little banners. But if you're, you know, not really paying attention to that, you can grab those yeah. easier. So here's one here. And just down in the corner, you mm -hmm. can see there, there it says 20th. Yeah. So yeah, so you can easily identify them because the backs are going to be the yeah. same as the normal ones. But the backs for the river are that darker, like your starting tile, as opposed to your other ones. Right. So, so that's kind of nice too. Yeah, it makes it real easy to find. What we do though when we clean up, we grab the river first, just so we know it's separated before we start shuffling up everything else. But, yeah, and and really yeah. ever since I was exposed to the river, I've never played a game of Carcassonne, I think, mm -hmm. without it. That was part of, you know, the base. Now obviously the other versions... The, you know, like Carcassonne around the world and things like that. Yeah. Those games don't necessarily have it, but uh, uh, no, I've really enjoyed this. Mm -hmm. um, I think the 20th anniversary one, if you don't already own Carcassonne, um, I, I think, and especially if you're looking for to have the base game, uh, I would definitely go get this one. Um, if you already own the base game, I would still get this one because of the included expansions. And then I would be that good friend and say, hey, here you go. Here's I was going to say, yeah, you can trade it. You know, uh, a friend of mine, uh, he had the base game. He bought it, hadn't opened it yet. And I said, hey, you know, the 20th anniversary just came out. So he ordered uh, that. Um, and then I told him, I said, well, you know, you've you've got some children that are grown and already out of the house. You could re-gift that other one, uh, you know, to them. Yeah. And he thought that was a great idea. Because Carcassonne, I think... It's a great gateway family game. It's very accessible. Um, and it plays up to five mm -hmm. players. Um, the other colors we have are yellow, black, and red. Um, and speaking of which, so I can, you know, we showed them off in the unboxing, but here's also the insert. So you can easily keep the river and the 20th anniversary expansion separate. And of course, you got your area here for uh, your normal tiles. And, you know, we've got baggies for each of the player colors. Now, we mentioned at the beginning of the video that you personally picked out all of the stickers to place. I did. Because they're front and back. Um, I did try to kind of match up some of the colors um, with the meeples, but mainly what I did first, I looked through and said, oh, there's a lot of redheads, and I want those in the blue because I will be most likely using the blue meeples. I tried to give you some cool ones for the green guys, and then the rest of them, I was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, and so one of the guys that I have to pick out, because this was the only request that I had, was this guy right here, because he is the archer, so he is the green arrow. He is the green arrow. So this is little Oliver Queen. Ollie, yeah. Um, I have, like, this awesome girl here. She's got her sword. I have another who's a witch on her broom. I just think it's cool, so I picked those guys, and I was like, I think I'd have them. Because they're just cool. Yeah. So oh, that is... Oh, got Grandma with her sheep. Oh, Grandma with her sheep. Um, so that is the, the kind of cool thing with this is mm -hmm. you have made this a custom version for us. I have. Yeah, um, that's very true. So you were always going to play blue in this. So yeah. you have, you know, the characters that you I like. <laughs> I, I didn't care so much with the green other than the green arrow. Um, but I do, I want to show off one of the do guys. you have a juggler? Um, I do. But I have this guy here. And I call him my, uh, I, I say he's shirtless. He he's shirtless. a shirtless drummer there. Yeah. Um, and then you can see, you know, the backside there. It just, I don't know. It just kind of makes me laugh every time I, yeah. I put him out there. Um, and then, of course, you know, you're going to be using one for your, your scoring. Uh, any particular reason why you chose uh, who you chose? The, the belly dancer girl? No, I just kind of threw her over there for mine. Yeah, I just, you know threw my guy over there too so didn't really matter much yeah but uh no i've i've enjoyed this a custom set though. yeah and it's the set that you created it is, so yeah. that makes it even more special okay so doing a quick google search i was curious um the price point compared to the 20th edition to the regular if you're kind of looking if do i buy the base game or do i buy the 20th if i don't have one um, and it is a little bit more money. It looks like the base game is about $31 off of Amazon. Um, and then your other variations of Carcassonne are about anywhere from 20 to 40. It looks like this edition on Amazon is going for about 50 at Miniature Market. It was 40. Um, so it is a little bit more money. But you got to realize you're, you're getting, getting little expansions. You're, you're getting, getting some expansions in there. You're yes. getting some different artwork. Um, I'm assuming the glossy, you know, thing might cost a little bit more production wise. I don't know. I mean, the only um, thing that you're getting extra with the Abbott is really just the 
the Abbott peoples. Now, some of the tiles uh, have the garden in there. So if you were to go buy the Abbott as a, an expansion for the original, mm -hmm. um, it's probably not going to be that much. Uh, but the fact that you do get a brand new river and you get 15 for the 20th anniversary edition, which this is the only way you're going to get it. Um, I would also, like I said, recommend getting this if I had to buy it, you know, because mm -hmm. I didn't already own the base. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I'd also re-gift the base Very because I'd always play, want to play with this. Yeah. Very true. Um, so out of all the Carcassonne's that we've played, which version is your favorite? Oh, man. Now that we're kind of coming to like an anniversary milestone. That's, like. that's a tough one. See, um, for me, I might be a little bit biased. The winter one is my yeah. favorite. And I think it's just because of how much fun we have with that one. That's always one that hits our table around almost Christmas time, you know, when I would be on holiday from school, you know, make a cup of tea and hot chocolate, and we just sit around and play it a couple times. Yeah, because that is the other thing, a great thing about Carcassonne is this is a very relaxing game, um, and there's usually not a lot of talking involved. No. Uh, at it's, least not in our games It's very too much. puzzle-like. It's, you know, yeah, like you said, you're drinking a cup of cocoa or tea or whatever, and you're, you're just Your kind of, one you beverage. know, you're making a puzzle. Um and you do have something really cool to look at. I mean, I like standing back after we've played a game and just kind of look and see how everything um, looks. And I do know that this looks really neat. But like you said, the winter one, you know, instead of having the green, they're snow, snow covered. Um, yeah, that one's still probably one of my favorites just because, I mean, it's essentially the base game. Mm -hmm. um, but, snowy. but But it, it is <laughs> snowy. And we do always get that out. And it's, you know... It's something that you and mm -hmm. I have, have kind of bonded over. So That was the version you taught me Carcassonne on, too. So that was like my first exposure to Well, it's to because it. I didn't own the base. Yeah. Now, I, <laughs> I, I specifically bought that one over the base uh, because I wanted the snowy tiles. Because mm -hmm. I always like to, you know, look for games that I can play at certain times of the year. And that one, you know, I think ever since I got it, has always hit the table every winter. Pretty much, yeah. Um, and multiple times. So, you know, I kind of like that. Now... The other Carcassonne versions, the, like Carcassonne Around the World, um, I think my buddy Ryan, I think he likes Safari the best. That one's um, cool. It reminds Gold me. Gold Rush I like a lot. Because it has the cowboy meeples. Yeah, and the I little like tents. That, yeah. And you're you're really good at that one. I am for whatever reason. Um, I'm good at that one. <laughs> so I, I, I like that one. Uh, Hunters and Gatherers, which I think was the last one we did um, with that, that new version. That one was Mammoths, yeah. Yeah. That one was interesting. That was, yeah. Uh, and I and I like that. The Each castle one has is a two player. Own twist, yeah. Which is cool. Um, which I don't think you've played the castle. I, I played it with Hefe a long time ago because I've had that one it. for a long time. Um, it plays a you know quite a bit different than uh, than this because you're building off the castle walls and you're trying to score points so you can get things around the the get more points and and special things around the edge of the castle. So. Uh, but then I think we've got Amazoas and we've got South Seas that we've not played. Of course, we've got Star Wars. We've played oh, that yeah, one. Oh, yeah, the Star Wars one was cool. I really liked the Star Wars one. That one was really interesting, yeah, because you had, like, space fights and stuff, too. Yeah. That so, one was cool. So while they're all similar, they all, like you said, mm -hmm. have something that kind of sets it apart from everything else. Um, but, yeah, the, the winter one is always, like I said, very sentimental to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so that is... Uh, Carcassonne, the 20th anniversary edition. Uh, I highly recommend that. Megan yeah. highly recommends it too. Uh, so, like I said, this is brand new. So, go out and get it and play it with the ones you love. There you well, go. We will catch you guys next Bye. time. Bye. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, click that like and subscribe button. You can also follow us on social media like Facebook. And Twitter at Dad v. Daughter. And if you like what we do and you want to support us, you can visit our Patreon page. So thanks for watching. Thanks.